Start counting. Hi guys, and welcome again to our one of our virtual events. This week's series is the um this, I'm sorry, this week, we, I get a feedback and all of a sudden my brain turned off. All right, this week's series is um, Women's History Month and uh, we have a very, very special guest today, Constable Martha Dominguez. Um, she is the first female uh, constable in Bell County. We're gonna visit with her in a second. I just wanna remind you that um, if you need attendance credit for being here make sure you go to the library website go to events and register there um we doing all this week we are speaking with some very powerful and amazing women in our community and so i'm not going to do a lot of speaking here i'm going to go ahead and just Give it over to uh, Constable Dominguez. So take it away. Thank you. Um, it's second female in the county, first in the precinct. <laughs> first Hispanic female in the precinct. Hope, hope, to, hope to keep those stats going and just be replaced by future women that strive to be in this position, something that was not at all easy. It was my first campaign experience. And let me tell you something, after this, I don't think there's anything that could bring me down after having gone through everything. Um, yes, my name is Martha Dominguez. I am from Colleen. I've been in the Colleen area since 1978. And if I didn't just date myself, I don't know what. Um, so I grew up here in Colleen, not military. My parents moved here in the early 70s, uh, brought the rest of us here with them. I uh, went to school here in Colleen. Uh, at, I went to school at what now is City Hall. Back then used to be Avenue D. Um, and just a little side note, never in my dreams, all this dreams that I ever think I would be in this position. Uh, life happens and you know, you you go through certain things that just keep changing what you want to do. Uh, first thing I wanted to do was be a hairdresser back in the 90s. <laughs> so what do I do when I get a chance after have a, sorry, I'm going to backtrack a little. I do have three children. My oldest son is in the Navy. He's been there for almost eight years. Uh, my second child, um, my daughter, she's Right now, working on her associates, looking forward to going to A&M to be, become a vet. Um, things may change, but that's been her dream since she was nine, so I don't think it'll happen. <laughs> and my third child, he's 16. He's looking to follow in his older brother footsteps, so it seems like they are all well prepared, have everything uh, lined up, you know, much more than what I could say of myself at that age. Yeah, I was a mom at 18. Um, you know, things Things happen, obviously, which don't regret. You know, a lot of people say if I could do things differently, I would, and I wouldn't change anything about anything of my 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 life so far. Um, one of the things that we want to speak about today is, I guess, I'm following some what has already previously been said. Uh, nothing is easy. Nothing's going to be given to you. So you, you please be aware that if you fail on something today, that means nothing except you need to work a little harder to get to where you want to go. You know, there's many failures that you're going to go through. Uh, don't look at any of them as in you're done, you're, you're, you're stuck. It, it just means that you have to work a little harder. You know, you have to put in your time. You have to do what you need to do to get to where you're going. Um, and I say this because my daughter, she she was a speaker last year for for our high school group. That is exactly what she said at her young age. You know, no one determines what you're going to do except for you. A million people could stand in line and tell you you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it, but it ultimately is up to you. And if you want to do it, those million people are wrong. You know, um, throughout this campaign, I know I was I was going to speak actually about. My, um, my myself, my life, but things happen, you know, things always change.
I'm sorry. <laughs> I was going to try to not. But my biggest mentor, my friend that did so much for, for me personally and politically, passed away Saturday morning. Um, Mr. Oviaronga, he was, oh my gosh, so knowledgeable. I don't even think I got to touch a speck of what all he knew. Best part was that he was just willing to share everything. Oh my gosh. And he's the one that got, got with Miss Oser here and got me on this on this program. You know, but back when that happened, of course, who would have thought that we would have been talking about what a great person he was? You know, and like I told his um his his son, he did so much that I don't think I could ever repay him the, you know, in any way in the rest of my life. You know, and here we are trying to pay our respects to his family. And what I get in return is that he did that because he he actually knew me and he believed in what I'm trying to do. You know, which to me, I when I think of what I was trying, you know, the, my motivation to get into this office was to just make it run the right way. You know, not to do anything fancy or be seen as somebody special, but it was just to run it with integrity, to do the right thing, you know, integrity, do the right thing even when nobody's looking. That's all I wanted for everybody to be treated fairly. But it seems like nowadays that was such a huge deal because it doesn't happen much. You know, everybody at one point gets so frustrated and they're, they get fed up and wish they could change things. Well, that's how I felt at some point. And then the opportunity just actually came up to where I could, you know, and it was a fight and it was a struggle the whole way. You know, the whole way things came up and um, even with, you know, publicity and all that and whatnot, that it was negative. It was pretty negative, you know, and I kept getting told, no, you need to, you need to respond. You need to, you need to do something. You can't just stay quiet. And Mr. Raul and I conferred and we're like, if I do speak up, it's going to have, it's going to impact somebody else negatively. You know, and it's, I don't want to do that. Well, you're right. You know, you don't. You don't counter that uh, something negative with something else that's negative. You know, it's like, so we decided we don't, I won't do anything, you know. They can have their one sided story, you know, because the people that I grew up in this community, you know, a lot of people know me, not just from the campaign and from pictures and from signs, but they truly know me because they grew up with me. Whenever something happened, you know, there we are willing to help because that's. It took a while for me to actually recognize things I do, and that's just me. I'm there to help who I can, when I can, how I can, you know, because at the end of the day, that's what a community and that's what us as human beings should be doing for one another, you know, not just when it benefits you, you know, so that's actually how I met Mr. Vironga back in 2017 when I moved, I was living in the country and I actually moved back into, into the city. So everything was a lot closer, you know, I didn't. I could actually make those seven o'clock meetings and I could, I didn't want to do it before because I didn't want to commit to something and then not be able to come through because I live so far. Um, so started going to LULAC meetings and saw everything that, that we, that they did. I saw it previously and that's why I wanted to. And so one of my high school friends is actually still a part of LULAC, Ms. Jeanette, you know, she was like, well, come on, you know, come to a meeting. I did. And well, we hope you come back to another meeting and eventually join. And we're like, well, I'm ready to join right now. <laughs> you know, and it went from there. You know, we uh, work 
we work so hard all year long. It's COVID put a huge dent on everything that we do because it's through contacts, you know, um, that we make all of our funds or our fundraising. Um, through LULAC, for those of you that aren't familiar, our council 4535, we work all year long to get sponsors so that we can provide scholarships for all graduating high school students as well as CTC and AM. Uh, first and second year, I believe, freshmen and sophomores, I believe it's the first two years that you can get a scholarship, and it's a thousand dollars. You know, some people are like, oh, it's a that well, when you're a college student out of this local area, a thousand dollars goes a very long way, very long way. Uh, we have one of our members, Miss Nancy, that scholarship made the difference whether she went on to get her degree or not. You know, so um, those are stories that we love to hear from students coming back. You know, we're, we're making a difference. We're impacting somebody's lives and we're helping these students move on. You know, that's how I approach most of the students I came across with when I was working the road with truancy summons because a lot of kids just don't have that discipline at home. You know, you can't and. As. Community leaders, you can't just look at somebody and be like, oh, you know, you didn't go to school, so you're not going to make any. No, that's when you step in. That's when we need to be stepping in and tell them, look, yeah, you made a mistake. So what you 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 got no credit for this past semester. Do you know there's not academies? Do you know you could go to pathways to a self paced? You know, talk to your counselors. You still have options. And they don't know. So. I'm like, okay, we're, we've got to step up a little more as far as that goes. So um, we can't let our dropout rate at the high schools continue to, to escalate, you know, or even if they do finish, uh, that they feel like they don't have any other options, but to just get in any job, you know, there's technical schools, not college isn't for everybody at the same time. And I tell kids this, you know, what are you good at? You know, because if at a high school, if you're good at putting stuff together, maybe you need to go get a technical job or something. <laughs> you know, something's going to work out for you. I direct them to local organizations that give out, you know, scholarships. Um, as LULAC, we try to focus with, um, that's the correct word, more needy families. You know, if because of your grade point average isn't this, you know, you're probably not going to get this, go step in. You know what? Because just because you struggled a little bit doesn't mean that you don't deserve it. I think every child, every child, honestly, that has a dream and that wants to go on with their education and be something, be somebody, that they deserve it. They deserve everything that we can give them. And it's going to be a bigger struggle now that Mr. Raul is not with us, too. But I think the majority of us are going to work a lot harder to keep it going. You know, for him. Back to him, you know, he was just had the biggest heart, you know, the citizenship classes, you know, as sick as he got and with the rest of us with our schedules, we couldn't, most of us couldn't help because of the times and dates. Well, and after he was on dialysis, he's still doing it. He's still helping people fill out their naturalization applications. If you haven't ever filled one out, then probably need to, need to make a have a class just to be able to fill out that paperwork and submit it. Um, like I said, I had planned on talking, you know, about myself, but it's just kind of hard when the person that helped you get where you are isn't there anymore. I guess this also helps to show you guys that uh, we're all human. And no matter what position you see us, we all have hardships, emotional ones right now. Um, but that just, at the same time, should just teach us that we need to be grateful on a daily basis for everybody that we have. And to understand that there are some people that make such a huge impact in your life and you don't even really recognize it. I've always recognized it because I knew Mr. Raul's history here in Colleen, even when he was he was a judge, 
And this is funny because my grandfather, rest in peace, many, many years ago, had to go in front of Mr. Raul when he was a judge. You know, and my grandfather, of course, he was a lot older than him, didn't have a driver's license, kept getting pulled over, you know, because he needed to drive. And we all sure have one of those family members that's in that stage of life that you can't tell them what they're not going to do. And even if it's, you know, well, you're going to get pulled over, you're going to get these citations and they're just going to build up. He's like, well, what do they want me to do? I've got to get to point A, point B. And well, Mr. Raul, Judge Villaronga at that time, he was like, well, you're right. He's like, and yeah, because of this and this, you can't get your driver's license. It had to do with health, the health his health restrictions. So he let him drive. We're like, okay, <laughs> he didn't help us. You know, we're trying to keep him off the street. But okay, if it's going to be okay now, he's not going to be having to pay for all these tickets. That's great. Thank you. You know, but it's things like that that you can, you know, that we would bring up, they would come, come up one point or another. And that lets you know, that let me know that I can plan whatever I want on a daily basis for my life. And guess what? I, at the end of the day, really don't have control over it. Um, I don't, uh, just a little bit of religious, um, a little religious piece, um, that go, that being said, God has control of our paths. Our paths, I believe were, were already lined up. That doesn't mean it's a straight path. That means God said, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to be. I'm going to put these little pieces, these crumbs that you need to come across and you'll get there. You know, obstacles are already there. You have to fight them. You want this. This is what you're going to have after this fight. You know, and you start to realize that after all these things start to come together, you know. So I like to believe that Mr. Raul coming into my life was set in motion way before I ever knew. And that this is another trial that we're supposed to go through, but it's going to be, it's going to make things better at one point. It was just some, another thing again that we had to go through, all of us, to understand certain things, to work harder, to know that, yes, this is what I need to be doing, doing, you know, we all need to be doing. And this just made our family a lot bigger. You know? You know, through LULAC, it's not just an organization. It truly is a family because we're all there for each other. We all understand that we're good now, but we're not always going to be that way. And but at the same time, we know that we're going to have a family to support us. Right now, it's our turn to support Miss Julia and, and her family. And after talking to her this week, and she Finally understands that we will be there. And it's not for it to get anything back out of it. It's because we're doing our Christian duty, you know, to be there for whoever needs our, our help. In this case, her again. It hurts us. And I think this is the first time I've done this in public, you know, because I'm that person that will grieve and mourn, but in private, because in public, you need to be stronger for everybody else. You know, and a lot of us feel that way, and we should know that it's okay to to have these moments publicly, you know, but at the same time, I don't think I'll ever be able to around Miss Julia because when I'm around Miss Julia, it's time to be the strong person. It's time to let her emotions run free and be there for her. You know, she's the one that's hurting the most and will for the longest time. I don't think she'll ever get over. I don't think anybody ever does. You know, that was a 63 year relationship going on 64. Um, some of us haven't even been alive that long and much less. It's, I can't imagine, honestly, you know, it's like, wow, you know, you found your one 
it was the first time first one was your one and that's admirable you know because you know that their life was not easy you know they had to have hardships but they pulled through it you know that's that's just amazing to me you know for any any relationship that lasts that long it's just like you went through i'm sure the hardest times in history together you know and you you did it you did it and not only that but Oh my gosh, everything that Mr. Owen accomplished in his life when yesterday his oldest son, Raul, as well, found some documents and they're looking for their old, you know, information for the obituary. And then he finds what looked like a, a resume. His, and he read through it. And I was like, my goodness, you know. Vietnam went that twice, you know, one time wasn't enough. <laughs> and for anybody to go back to that and just that, that's just from what I learned from history, you know, just that alone, just put him over the top, but, you know, then everything else that he accomplished makes you feel like, what have I done? What have I been doing? Look at this, you know, look at this man. Uh, it, it's mixed feelings because we know we're in mourning but at the same time you keep discovering things and you're like he never stopped he never stopped and even told these past couple of months you know he's weren't working on rechartering the council we still get emails i need this and this and this for me and we're like wow if i could do a quarter of the things that he did in his life and with in, in mine i would feel you know wow just well, how, um, and I'm sorry that this has turned into more of a Mr. Raul thing <laughs> instead of me. Um, I don't think anybody would have any questions at this point because of that. I do, I do, and no, that that is perfectly fine. We we wanted your story, and what we see is in our community a constable who has an amazing heart and your mentor. Could you could you maybe tell us some of the things that uh, Mr. Raul taught you over the years? Because he sounds amazing. And I know from speaking with you that you, you struggled to get where you are. And um, yeah, can you just tell us about that? Because um, I know You've been shaped by Mr. Raul, and um, we're so grateful for that. Well, I can tell you, I am not a politician. Politics to to this, you know, <clears throat> I never really cared for, um, simply because you do still what you're told. I mean, you may be in the sense, you know, that's how, what I, how I looked at it. You still do what you're told. You still have some, and accountability should be there regardless of who you are. I mean, you should, we should all be accountable to somebody um, just um, to keep us honest, you know, and with Mr. Raul, Mr. Raul knew, I feel that Mr. Raul knew what my, how my life was going to go before I did, you know, and again, that just goes back from, you know, now these, some little chats. Um, the first, my first public speaking was to LULAC and it wasn't so much as a speech really, it was just reading, you know, um, at our 2019 it was, it was, it was the last one we had at our 2019 scholarship banquet that day. We're all setting up and we had some major changes during that year. So we all had to step it up a little bit more with what we were, our assignments as far as getting that banquet set together. Well, he, that's when he started a little on his decline. And that day he wasn't feeling too well. So he gives me a folder. He's like, this is your job today. I opened up the folder and it's presenting all the scholarships 
am doing all, all the reading and we had a full room. And I'm like, okay, um, I don't even have 30 minutes to do this. And he just looks, you know, cause he knew we weren't gonna tell him no. <laughs> so we go through and there I am. I was like, but um, I actually think I did pretty well at the end of, at the end of that day. And it, it went from there. One of the things that Mr. Raul did tell me, and it was in the middle of our campaign crisis, quote unquote, and it's what I was speaking about earlier that we conferred. He's like, you don't. He's like, you let them throw all the mud they want at you. It does not matter. He's like, and you do not. He's like, you will not do the same back. He's like, because that speaks on your character. He's like, you can try to defend yourself uh, you know, all day long, but the moment you open up that door, you know, it just opens up for them to, to come with you at you with more. It's like people get tired of fighting a, a wall eventually, a chair, because nothing's gonna come back. Um and I, I felt that way as well. That's why, you know, I but I needed to get his advice as far as that went. You know, he's like, don't do it. He's like, you know what that makes some people do? What? He's like, on the on the on the receiving end, he's like, it just makes you work harder. The way you know how to do it. You know, and you know what? And and he was right because every time something negative popped up, it just made me go out there and do more things, you know, be seen more. I was like, you know what? The point of that was to let people see you, let people judge you, not because of what you said, but based on your actions. You know, you, you do things from your heart, not because it's going to get you somewhere. You know, and that's one thing that came out of my campaign. I'm like, look, I didn't start doing community work or working or service this past year. That's what I've always done. You know, I've always lived in this area. I needed to get back locally so that I could join organizations that I had been wanting to for years. But at that point, that had nothing to do with the campaign because I wasn't, the campaign wasn't even in the place yet. You know, it wasn't until, until the former constable decided that he wasn't going to run again, that he was going to retire. You know, and based on the people that had already put the, their names in the hat, that's what made me and um, join the race. You know, when you when you know people and you've worked with them for years, you know what you, the future lies, what, what they'd be in a leadership position. You know, do we want to really keep the same thing or do we actually want to give everybody that works under that one elected official a fair chance? You know, and I believe that's all that most of us need is a chance to do our job right in the right way. You know, we don't need extra perks. Most of us, you just need it. Like I said, be given the chance to come to work every day, do your job and not have people harass you, you know, because you're doing your job. Um, he, I, he impacted, go ahead. I was gonna say, I have a question about that. Does, um, you know, being a Latina woman, did you encounter some of the struggle? Just that alone. Um, I heard from some people when um, I, we were out seeking support. She's a woman. This precinct will never have a woman constable. You know, and I'm like, okay. You know, well, that's fair, you know, because you don't know me. You don't know me. So what you're saying, you're having, your comment is purely based on gender and you have a right to your opinion, thank you very much. But we will prove you wrong. <laughs> you know, um, and I'm thankful that nowadays it's, it's truly not based on gender. You know, it's on what you've accomplished and what you hope to accomplish, you know, um, your ideology, you know, at, like I said, it was it was just to get here to be able to give everybody a fighting fair chance at everything. 
you know, one of the things I during my campaign that I was saying was that our, we were lacking in training. And that training need to be get, needed to be given to those that asked for it based on what type of training it was. And the answer, you, you know, whether you were denied or not, didn't need to be based on how much you liked me. You know, or what you were doing for me, because your certification doesn't help me out. It helps you, if if that makes if that makes sense. You know, so finally, um, what, that's one of the things that I can actually say that I've already accomplished. You know, um, I, we've had a an example. I've had a deputy here for so now. I have a deputy here for several years that couldn't advance and hurt his, his certification because he wasn't allowed to go to classes. Well, he'll have that certification that um, by the end of next month, you know, because we've been working very hard with him to get him and and we've been working, well, he's been working very hard to get his classes done. All we've had to do is register for him, you know, okay, from here, go to this class. You have to go to this class. You know, we need to get you to where you, to where the rest of us are. And that's, it's another one of the goals, you know, we all need to be on the same level, regardless of what our title is here. And that's how I feel personally. You know, everybody needs to know what I know, and I already know what they all do. I know their job. Um, when I started in this office as a clerk, you know, so I've done the clerical. I've been to the road deputy. I've been the sergeant. So I, you know, and that's one of the things that people running for office should understand that. I think you should know the job before you start to want to go in there and do it. You know, it made a huge difference here in our office, especially when we had our state audit last week. You know, um, I wasn't caught in, I wasn't in the deer caught, you know, caught in headlights. You're like, what are you talking about? No, yes, we've got this and this and this. And so, you know, he's like, Constable, I have to go back and brag about you because you knew what you were talking about. And I was like, well, sir, I've been here for 10 years now. And if I didn't know what I was talking about, we'd have problems. Um, to our training, you know, mental health ha has grown to over the past two years, grown to be a big issue with law enforcement. And a lot of agencies, bigger agencies, we're only a 14 deputy agency. You know, myself and 13 officers plus two clerks um, say that they can't do it. Um, and I always have to, you know, do a little because it's possible. You know, are you willing to do put up with the struggle though while you accomplish it? Are you willing to, you know, say, hey, we got to work double time now because we want to get to point C, but we can't do it without B? Um, so I can say by the by about by the middle of June, every single person deputy in this office will be mental health certified. You know, and a lot of people were to what didn't want to make that happen because well we've got a sheriff's department that has a mental health unit. I was like, yeah, but same as us, that mental health at CRD unit has other assignments that they have to do as well. Um, we don't need to hold up and wait people, keep people on hold for about an hour or two until we can get one of those units. Well, we can do it. You know. Um, I'm sorry. You asked one question and I went into this whole other subject because I That's what this is about to let us know you. You're fine. You're uh, fine. So yeah. and, you know, um, in our hiring process, um, it's it's been a struggle because we have a, a group now that knows their jobs, that knows they have to set be self-motivated um, because one of my biggest things is I don't need to go tell anybody to do their job. And the moment we get somebody like that, we're gonna have issues. Um, and I, I told them, you know, your motivation is your paycheck. That's it. You're getting paid to do a job, go do the job. You know, that money's coming in constantly. Nobody needs to ask anybody to go do their job. And so when you start looking for people and, you know, it makes it a little hard because not everybody has that same work ethic. They've maybe worked at places where they've been allowed 
to just go at their own pace. And we can't afford to do that here. We get so we're during the pandemic we did get slowed down. But we all had that understand this is just a break, you guys. That's all this is a break. You know, once court starts getting into their in person hearings again, we're gonna get our fate and it's happening. You know, we're getting loads of work now. Um but my guys, they're you know, my guys, come on. <laughs> I've been Mother Martha here for several years, and this just actually, I need to make sure we have this and this and this for my guys. You know, it's, but um, they're they're awesome. They know what's expected, and at the same time, they trust that we're going to keep looking and hire somebody that fits that group. You know, you, you're you're looking for for family members, if that makes sense when we hire, because people stay here. You know, it's just like with anything else. I can't say, you know, when you're happy at work, when and in your when you're happy at your job doing you're happy doing what you do because all of us that do this, let me tell you, it's not it's never been for the pay. It has never ever been for the pay. We we do it because we love helping the community and because we're there they have the same, they feel the the same way that I do. You know, we're here to help. You know, we're not just serving papers. We actually get to interact with our citizens and see what's going on, how we can help. Um, how we can explain this papers, you know, we serve documents to a lot of people that don't understand. They don't even know why they're getting them. So there we go. Um, and the at one point in the past, it used to be, you know, you just give them your papers and leave. Okay, well, what if they can't read or or something, you know, we need to at least give them a little, little, you know, understanding of what they're getting. And now all the guys do that. They understand, you know, put yourself in that position. That's all I've always said. I was, I was complimented when I was, when I started as a road deputy here. Well, you treat all these people, you know, a certain way and you don't act like you're better than them. That's what I used, I was told during my FTO. And to me, that was a strange compliment. Honestly, it was. Um, so I'm like, well, who told you? So I told my, who told you that you were never going to be in that position? Who guaranteed your job? Or who, who told you that you were always going to be able to pay your mortgage? I haven't had that guarantee. So if you had, can you please guide me on how to get it? You know, and I was like, and that's just how I've always done my job. You know, I could be in that position at any time. And my only wish and hope is that if I was and I was getting this document, that I get somebody that could still give me that respect. You know, because we don't know anybody's backstory, you know, so it's only wrong to assume that because they're in that position, they did something wrong. You know, and in our north side of Colleen, and I, you know, I like to tell this to a lot of people, you got to understand it only takes one, you know, one situation that can set a family back because they are living paycheck to paycheck. You know, God forbid the, the, the breadwinner, whoever it is, gets sick, especially with these COVID. And we saw it, you know, with COVID. I'm still getting over it. I had it back in February. And my voice is not my, it, it's not based on allergies. It's still COVID. You know, I still have issues breathing. I, I still have other, you know, issues. Um, I was um, in, in the, uh, and that's another thing, you know, you, you lose your, your track. I go sometimes from, the, from here to the door and I forget what I was, I was like, oh my goodness. But I know what it is. So eventually we'll get over it. Um, so, so again, I saw how I was, you know, and I was hospitalized. I was in the hospital for four or five days. I think it was four days. Um, and they couldn't do anything, you know, except give me electrolytes. That's all they could do. For me. Um, <clears throat> so, and I'm, I'm lucky. I was blessed that I have a job, you know, that I, I could, I could be gone. And um, I hated it, and I still fought, found ways to communicate and to take care of things. 
to the phone. I mean, I had my guys taking me a phone to the house here. Here's this, you know, so that you can still try to communicate with us. And um, I have my personal phone, but it's, you know, emails, <laughs> work emails. So when you look at that and then you have somebody, you know, that they can't, you know, because they were gone for a week. Now, all of their finances are off. You know, what, what can they do? What do you do? Um, how, it's too easy to, well, they should have known that before and they should have had a, a savings. But when you work paycheck to paycheck and what you make is what, what's, what's coming in is what's going out just to feed and pay, pay feed the family and pay your bills, you know, it's, it's kind of hard. Um, so, you know, again, just going back, that, that's how we do, we do our job now. You know, you treat everybody with respect. You know, if you're sitting there, if if you're doing eviction, you know, it's not you. you. You talk to talk to them. You know, it's not us that made that decision. It, we're, we're tasked with enforcing it, you know, and allow people to vent. You know, that's that's just a huge, a huge thing. You know, don't take it personally. This is our job. You can't take anything personally. It's the situation. You know, we we walked out of houses after removing children that CPS had filed paperwork for. And the parents have actually told us to have a blessed day, be safe. That says a lot, you know, that says a lot to me. And that means we're doing our job right. You know, um, our, our jobs, and that's what I've noticed with our group, our jobs and our lives run, run the same way. And most of the time you have to, you know, um, you can't be one way at work and another way at your house, you know, um, and it, it all, the golden rule, you know, it's everything, pretty much life, everything in life could be, <laughs> could be situated if everybody just, just had always had that light bulb come up and be like, oh, but I'd like for somebody to treat me in this situation. How would I like to be handled? You know, this way, let's do it. You know, um, again, when we're talking, everything is just, you know, it has that magical answer where, where you can just do that. Um, I understand though that um, we we all live differently. We've all had different situations, different life experiences, which is what molds us. You know, um, some people make the best out of the worst situation, and some people can't handle it. And at the same time, those people need to understand that is fine too. You know, um, I get told a lot that because. What I've had just in the past six, seven years to deal through, deal with is just unbelievable. You know, my dad in 15, January 15th of 2015, he was, went into renal failure. I was told you have six months, you know, it, it was a doctor with no bedside manners whatsoever. And, you know, uh, yeah, you have six months, you know, all we can tell you is to get your affairs in order. Well, we're not staying at this hospital. <laughs> you know, let's transfer you to where you belong, you know, and he's on dialysis still. You know, completely healthier person, believe it or not, than back in Jan that January where he just looked horrible and, and all, you know, that's where our faith comes in and like, no, the doctor doesn't determine how much time you had. You take care of yourself. Let us take care of you. Um, we'll get a different answer as I can. When we do all we can, then whatever answer we get at that time, we can accept. It's like, this is just the beginning of that next journey. You know, um, the year, actually about six months before that is when my, my grandfather had passed away. Um, and my grandfather had passed away. Um, I had my mom at my house uh, because she had been T-boned and had fractures in her spine and her collar and her ribs. And so she couldn't be left alone. Um, it, everything was like not even six months apart for, for a couple of years. And I remember being told, you know, I wish I could take that from you. I'm like, I don't, 
I don't wish this on anybody, you know. God gives us what we can handle. I was like, and he knew I could handle all this. And you probably couldn't, you know, we all have different, different ways of dealing with stress. And it's like, I'll take what I need to take and then I'll deal with it, you know? Oh gosh. <laughs> then of course, you know, Mr. Every time I, I say that probably from now on, it'll be Mr. Raul that I think about. And, but I know that from this point forward, all we can do is pray for him, for his soul. Well, let me just, I mean, I don't know if we have any questions yet, but let me just say that knowing that in my county, there is a, a constable who has as much heart that you have that you spread into your department so that everyone else in your department will treat people with compassion is 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 it, it's it's an amazing blessed feeling that we have you and i know you've not been in the position very long to be the boss no um, <laughs> but it sounds to me like um what was needed was humanity and you brought humanity and it sounds like there was already humanity there in your department but now the boss says we're going to do humanity and we are going to you know have the mental health training and you're helping your individual um the the people the officers who need it the deputies who need and um it takes a very special person and it sounds like you are that very special person um and, and i just i feel very very um uh, very blessed that we have met you in this community and we have you um denise do you is are there any questions at the moment no denise? let me read let me uh refresh one more time <laughs> she's hiding from us <laughs> No, no question. Okay. All righty. Well, what we would like to do, if it's okay with you, um, is, you know, if you want to put your like division or anything else in the comments, we can definitely do that. And definitely anyone, um, you know, if you want to leave the comments, we can go ahead and uh, have that and then we can forward it to uh, Constable Dominguez. I have to ask you one question now. Do you like any job? I love it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> considering I've been here, honest, it's almost the end of March, but because of uh, several, well, I had eye surgery in, in January, so I, I had been, I had, was out for that. And then I was here less than a week before I had to deal with the COVID. So I'm like, okay, I think I'm on my second month maybe of doing this um we did our budget so we had our first state audit that's the TCO audit last week which that was no big deal because i actually requested it <laughs> yeah. well, do, do you recommend that more um women get involved in and strive to absolutely to get these top positions absolutely um it's not that um I love men, <laughs> but I think when it comes to making certain decisions, we, we're women, we're mothers, you know, we put a lot, a lot more thought into certain things. Um, I loved for our department to get, uh, get, get ahead, but at the same time, I have to keep our taxpayers in mind because we are taxpayer funded, you know, and one of my things I said earlier this year was I'm going to get us the best that we can, but 
we will do it the cheapest way possible because that's just me. I was like, I am frugal to an extent. Uh, you know, I want the best quality, but I only want to pay a couple of dollars for it. Um, and now that we, you know, with with the tax rate increases, I was like, I we have to give back. We have to keep it at, at a minimal. Just get what we need, and you know, keep in mind that there's nothing wrong with returning funds to the general fund at the end of the day. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, just because you have a hundred dollars doesn't mean you have to spend a hundred dollars. You know, um, women, absolutely. There's so many. You know, and I tell people, everybody that's in the law enforcement, you're already a leader. Because you chose to serve, you know, you, you have, we have a servant's heart and you have, you, you have, you, you already have everything you need, you know, um, and I have no problem with anybody that wants to get ahead to reach out, you know, there's, there's some things I learned. <laughs> You know, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's all on that person. It's all, it's all on you, what you, what you have, what you, what you want to offer. You know, you have to be willing to go above and beyond and not do just what's asked of you. And I think that goes for every profession when you want to get ahead. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to have had your 30 years experience, you know, um, I got my experience through the prison, th to, through different jobs. Um, I started at one point on the hairdressing part. I went and got, I, I went through the, through the college, you know, got my state license. So I was a hairdresser. And while I was waiting on my license, I went and got a job at the prison. So that's where my law enforcement interest started. And I never, ever did hair except for the prison. <laughs> You know, um, I, I like to tell people, don't turn jobs down because that's not what you want. A lot of people say differently, you know, you, you keep your, uh, set your goal and you keep it and you don't take anything less. My take on that, I, I've never been in a financial position to turn down a job when I needed a job, you know? So I say, you take what you can and you make the best out of it. I'm a tax preparer, <laughs> I'm a hairdresser. <laughs> I'm in law enforcement, you know, and all those things. I never looked down on any of them. I'm not ashamed that I did, you know, taxes because guess what? I was given advice here at some point on taxes. Uh, I worked for the tax office here, the tax appraisal. So I got plenty of knowledge that I pass on to people on a daily basis when they get tax suits. It's like, don't worry about it. County doesn't really want your property. They just want you to take care of this portion. You can make payments on it. Well, they didn't know that before, you know, they're scared thinking that they have to pay everything at once. And that's why they've been like trying to pretend it didn't exist. No, you need to, you need to take care of things. Um, I explained that to all that to my guys. Look, I didn't just come across this stuff. This is through my past experiences, through my jobs. And that's why I guess I believe, you know, you take the job that you need because it's going to do something for you, you know? Um, yeah. I don't, it's just, uh, I'm sorry, you know, I keep going on and on, on, I'm rambling. <laughs> oh, you're fine. You're fine. This is what we, we, we invited you to do. And, and we do, we do agree that every, every experience that you have, no matter whether it was dog walking, we've learned, I mean, you didn't do dog walking, but what <laughs> I'm saying is, you know, you learn from each one. So, yes. um, well, um, it's getting to that time and we want to truly, truly thank you. Um, you, you have given us a piece of your life and your story and inspired everyone, not just women, everyone. And your, your, um, your memories of Mr. Raul has has been inspiring and is, is very important for this community too, because he was an extremely important person who has um, affected so many lives. And I meant to ask you, LULAC, what does that stand for? So some of our- um, It's the League of United Latin American Citizens. Okay, all right. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm like, did she say what it was now? 
Um, so definitely, you know, anyone who is interested in that, um, maybe in our chat, um, you could put it or we'll put it um, later uh, for, you know, that website if anyone wants to. Um, and, and Janice, if you could put that in the comments. Um, everyone, well, so thank you so much again. I know you're busy, busy, busy. Um, but before we go, remember, guys, we still have a lot more programs to do this week. We have the Alzheimer's uh, Association right smack in the middle of our Women's History Month week. Um, so we, we lined them up before we lined up our women's history. So tomorrow at noon, they're going to be talking about healthy living for your brain and body. And they it's for everyone. It, it's not for people who... Um, you know, or just worried about the Alzheimer's. It's a very important message. And then on Thursday, we we continue our Women's History Month. So just keep coming at noon and we will keep going with our uh, virtual events. Thank you so much. And um, we're gonna go ahead and have Janice take us out and don't go anywhere, Constable Dominguez. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>